right, welcome to this evening's uh, this regular business meeting. We're going to have a silent prayer, or do we have uh, a right fast? Well, I was about to say, uh, usually we would have a silent prayer, but uh, I uh, see uh, Bishop Dukes is here. If you would bless us in a, in a prayer, I would appreciate it, Pastor, and uh, be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would, please stand with me. You can do it from there, that's fine. You want to come to the podium? Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful to be in your presence. Oh, it's so good to be able to call on you at this time. Now I'm asking, Lord, that you come in and that you let your glory show. Uh, Lord, uh, take precedence in this meeting. We know that we're here for the meeting of the county, or the county meeting. But Lord, we can't have a meeting without you. So we thank you for you being in this place and guiding all of our, our language and guiding all our emotions. And so it's in your wonderful name that we pray. I ask that you bless the, our commissioner, our chief commissioner, and all the other commissions, commissioners. I ask that you bless every other person that comes as part of this wonderful county, and we're just asking that you just have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Do we pray and we say amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. All right. First order of business is to conduct roll call. Commissioner Gail Hambrick. Present. Commissioner Sonnet Gregory. I am present. Commissioner Felicia Franklin. I'm present. Commissioner DeMont Davis. Present. Madam Clerk, we are all present and accounted for. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our March 2nd, 2020 Board of Commissioners meeting. Our first order of business is adoption of the agenda. Do any members want to offer any amendments? Yes, Madam Clerk, I would like to add a emergency item resolution number 2021-54. Basically, it is a request from the Fire and Emergency Services, uh, EMA Director Landry Murkison, Chief Murkison, and it is to enter into a MOU with the school system to help establish a clinic, a COVID-19 vaccination clinic, uh, in which we can help to vaccinate our teachers and administrative staff within the school system. Is there a second? Second. Probably moved and second. And those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Are there any other adjustments or amendments? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. This is Hambrick, and Commissioner I Hambrick. would like to take off number 10, Ordinance 2021-51. All right. There's the motion. Is there a second? Second. Should Probably. this to take it off the agenda? or Yeah, just just, just take it off the consent agenda or just take it off altogether? Commissioner. Take it off altogether. All all right, probably moved and sucking. Are there any questions? And only thing I'll say about that is I had it placed back on or placed on the agenda because how can we hold the citizens accountable for their conduct when we're not doing the same for our own conduct on this board? You know, we always talk about best practices, but yet and still, when it impacts this board, I guess best practices go out the window. But that's my statement. Let me statement. say this, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner uh, Hambrick. Uh, we discussed this in work session, and I believe we had it on the agenda and took it off. No. And the fact that it was just put on without mentioning it to me anyway, uh, and knowing the objections and all, and then just to put it on there is, uh, uh, well, uh, to me, that's lack of respect. Because uh, maybe if we had discussed it and, and, and come up with some kind of resolution or whatever and all, that would have been okay. But to put the same thing back on there when we opposed it, then no, I can only, same, I, I have the same feeling. Commissioner, uh, I, I removed it the first time after 
first we had the work session. Then it was placed, I think I took it off before it even was on the agenda. Uh, yeah, I think I took it off before it even hit the agenda. We had tried to work through it. I see the urgency and the need to have a code of conduct. So just like you and any other commissioner who have placed things on the uh, items on the agenda without you know, sharing it with everybody else, but we did have a work session to discuss it. So it's not being disingenuous in my opinion. It's just something that I feel like needed to be done. But you are definitely within your rights and the rest of the board in which to remove it. Any other comments, uh, statements? Can you tell me who made the second? Was that uh, Franklin or Gregory? Gregory. Thank Gregory. you. All right, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, aye. Aye. Three, two, it passes. Uh, I also would like Madam Clerk to remove to the general, uh, regular agenda rather, resolution 2021-53, uh, resolution by the BOC identifying certain state legislative matters to be addressed in 2021 legislative session. Is there a second? Second. Properly moved and second. Those in favor, aye. Or oh, let me back up. Are there any questions, statements? All right, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Yes, unanimous. Any others? Mr. Yes. Yeah, I, this is Ham Brick, and I have another one to uh, just pull to the regular agenda. That's uh, Resolution 2021-52 um, with the transitional housing and pathway number 11. Okay, Resolution 2021-52, uh, which is a resolution to in initiate an amendment to uh, Apex A of zoning. Her motion is to put it on the regular agenda, correct, Commissioner? That's correct. All right, is there a second? A second. Second by Commissioner Gregory. Any questions on this one? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Any others? All right, hearing none. Um, excuse me. Yes, ma'am. I have a question, Chairman. Uh, Commissioner uh, Hambrick. The one that you added, the uh, resolution that you added. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you put in, is that on the regular agenda? Consent agenda. The, Consent agenda. Uh, can we put it on the regular agenda? I, I have a question, that's all, regarding okay. that. Okay. I'm in agreement. I just, I just want something uh, cleared up on that. So I guess. Unless we can do it now, but I believe I need to put it on the uh, Well, if you have a question in reference to it, uh, I don't see us having a problem with you asking your question now. Oh, okay. Okay, well, um, I noticed that the announcement that uh, Governor Kemp made was uh, the verbiage stated teachers and school staff, but in our resolution we have um, public school employees and public school students. Now, I'm assuming, but I guess I want to know for sure, are we including students in our resolution because of that new vaccine that's coming out, that Johnson & Johnson, where kids, um, uh, young people 18 and up can take it, or what's the rationale for us to include students? Go ahead, Chief. Okay. Um, Commissioner Hambrick, Chief Markerson, um, the reason we wrote the resolution the way we did is the purpose of this resolution is to allow Dr. Reddy and the Office of Emergency Management to provide medical oversight for the school's vaccine operations. So um, the reason we went ahead and included the students was so that this agreement will continue us through the totality of their vaccination process. The only people that will be um, vaccinated beginning March 8th are those who meet the governor's eligibility criteria in that 1A+, plus, which will be um, the teachers and school staff. So rather than narrowly focusing the um, agreement or the resolution to just 1A+, plus, we wanted to make sure we didn't have to come back before the board and then slow vaccine operations down um, as we progress through the other phases of the operation. So that's why the language is a little bit different, but we're only, um, we just recently re-signed um, rules and regulations and um, fraud documents about the vaccine. So we will only vaccinate those that are currently eligible. But this, this, this MOU and agreement will cover us from here um, until vaccine operations end. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Franklin had, um, her assistant had made the, had said that they were gonna pull the proclamation. So I need- Yes, I do apologize. 
Yes, ma'am. I apologize. I need to do that. Because that's your motion. I'll make a motion that we remove the proclamation from the agenda. And it would just simply be removed as our librarian of the year in the state of Georgia from Clayton County will be honored during library month. And we were wanting to honor her during women's history month because she had made history. But there's a little bit of a, how do you say, everybody's wanting to honor this beautiful employee that we have in our county that's recognized throughout the state. So we will do that later. If I can ask. Okay, so the motions to remove the proclamation from the agenda. I will second the motion. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed. It's unanimous. All right, so at this point we will adopt, attain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. I'll second the motion. Any questions? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed. It's unanimous. The board will now, I'm sorry, first we'll have our veteran of the month. All right, our veteran of the month, and again, we appreciate him and all the other veterans who continue to work, fight, and make our country the greatest country in the world. But this month here, we are going to honor and recognize Sergeant First Class Willie J. Jackson, who served Lee proud in the U.S. military for 20 plus years. His military active duty service experience was logistics department operations manager, where he supervised, managed, scheduled, coordinated all transportation requirements for movements internally and externally. Inventoried over 3,000 weapon systems, vehicles, and ammunitions prior to unit deployment. He developed the command supply discipline program for the organization consisting of 700 individuals, which was used to prevent fraud, waste, and abuse. He was department assistant manager, bomb, bomb holder uh, in bomb holder Germany, senior instructor, facilitator, non-commissioned officers academy, Fort Lee, Virginia, rear detachment operations manager, first sergeant logistics department manager, and S4 shop hunter at Hunter Air, uh, Army Air Force. Airfield. He currently is employed with G4S Secure Solutions as a Lieutenant Site Supervisor for 12 years. He is married to his beautiful wife, Avis Y. Jackson, of 30 years. They are proud residents of Clayton County District 1, Falcon Crest Subdivision. They have two precious daughters, Sydney and Rachel. His deployment consists of combat tours to Iraq, peacekeeping deployment to Bosnia, Kosovo, Korea, and Haiti. He also had extensive overseas tours to Korea and Germany. He, he retired in January of 2010, U.S. Army, with the distinction and honor as a disabled veteran of foreign wars. He has received numerous honors, awards, and special accomplishments. Please help me recognize and honor Sergeant First Class Willie J. Jackson. I don't believe he's here, but I believe he is uh, online tuning in. And sir, if you are, we thank you for your service and your continued support of Clayton County. Madam Clerk. The board will now hear public comments. Citizens will be given three minutes maximum time to speak before the Board of Commissioners. Please state your name and county of residency for the record. Speak clearly into the microphone, and speakers should be courteous, respectful, and not make any disparatory remarks or use abusive language when addressing the board. All right, got to find a list. All right, Teresa Hobson. Good afternoon. My name is Teresa Hobson. I've been a resident of Clayton County ever since 1992. I bought a house in 1994 off Valley Hill. 
I've been working with Clayton County Public School since 19, uh, 2009. I've been trying to open up a business in Clayton County for a year now. I talked to David Scott, I've talked to the permit people, and the only thing that I was asking is to bring in a shed. I've seen smaller sheds brought in, build it down, but I see where they're allowing the ice machines to come in and put them in property and everything. I'm trying to do a snowball stand. I did it in Mississippi, did not have a problem. I came to Clayton County and I talked to several people that said they had to take it out of Clayton because they wouldn't allow it. I'm trying to keep revenue into my county. I not, have not left Clayton County since I left Mississippi. So I'm trying to see how can I go about actually getting the information that I need done to bring in a shed, put it in a, in a facility where I could serve snowballs in Clayton County. Something nobody have done. And I want to be the first one to do it. Well, have you spoken to anybody at community development? Yes. I have. If you go tomorrow, Morrow have laws where you cannot put the snowball stand container. You can't do, um, you know, the banner to let people know that it's snowball. You can't do any decoration, no nothing. I came to Jonesboro. I found one. The lady was like, okay, in order to get it, you have to do, get an engineer. You have to do this and build it from the ground, put the concrete. The only thing I was trying to do is bring in the shed. CBS, a lot of the facility is empty. The CBS right beside my house been empty going on about four or five years. They told me I could come in and I could rent their facility until it's actually bought out. I don't have a problem with that. I'm just trying to get the business up, going, bring in revenue. But it's looking like every time I turn around, I'm at a, you know, a blockage. And I understand you went to the cities. Did you come go to the uh, Clayton County Department of Community Development? Yes, I talked to them. Okay, did they give you any? They did. They told me to go around the facility and see can I find a small building. And if I come down Terra Boulevard, you can see some of the storage area right there by um, Fancy Cars. Mm -hmm. Right by, they have a storage building where they sell, they a tire shop. If you're on the other side by the church and Darby's going down, it's a small little brick building. They do shea butter. So I'm just trying to find a small, empty place, do the same thing. They have been putting all these ice machines everywhere they want to. <laughs> Let me recommend this, and Mr. Ajiki is in the back of the uh, room here. Get with him, talk to him about what might need to be done, because it obviously is a, a zoning issue. Uh, talk about ways that you could possibly work out a, a solution to be able to do what you're wanting to do. And then the board will consider if that's something we would uh, allow or change, if we have to change any uh, of our ordinances or anything to address it. Now, I can't speak for the board, but like I said, if you work with him, he can talk to us about it, and then we'll address it one way or the other. Okay. Thank, I thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your time. Orlando Gooden. Orlando Gooden, Clayton County. I watched the presentation of the February 23rd work session and they were excellent. I want to thank directors Benjamin Hopkins, Pamela Ambles, Tori Tanks, and Warden Nelson. At the January 26th work session, Lexi Morton gave an update on the KCCB. She said because of COVID-19, several programs had a status of in progress or on hold and Chairman Turner agreed. The purpose of the KCCB was to bring awareness and education to the public. On January 9th, in a news release, KCCB launched a litter prevention program on the same day of the BOC meeting. Then on January 16th, one week later, item number eight, resolution 2021-36 abolished the program. Tell me what changed. Do you remember the January 2019 retreat? Item number two, quality of life. 
I know you received Mr. Leatherwood's email, but did you read it? He wrote, what a disappointment the decision was on Tuesday night when the Board of Commissioners decided to terminate KCCB. That decision continues to demonstrate to our residents that we are not serious in tackling our litter and trash problem and transforming Clayton County into a beautiful gateway we are meant to be. Also, how can you terminate a program without having a replacement? You took a problem, made it bigger, and gave zero solutions. Commissioner Franklin, in a Q&A, wrote, the citizens of Clayton County have entrusted me as their chairman to be a fiscal steward over their hard-earned tax dollars. This particular initiative simply did not reach the expected level of achievement after a year and a half of being created and funded. For this reason, I voted to reallocate the funds to be better used as the citizens can have proven results. I have said I would agree to universal trash pickup only if it works in conjunction with KCCB and refuse control. Today, a vote on item number 10, ordinance 2021 51 was necessary because it appears that this board has two chairmen and com a commissioner who said, I am not going to vote for it because I know I'm going to break it. it is not approved, if it is not approved, then the clerk should stop reading a code of conduct before public comments. Rules apply to everyone or to no one. There must be a ghost of Edmondson because the more things change, the more they say they stay the same. I want to acknowledge two people. The foundation of this county can grow with these two individuals, COO Dietrich Stanford and CFO Ramona Bivens. Those are the foundations for economic growth and for the county to develop. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mickey Garber. Chairman, may I remove it from my mask? <clears throat> yes, sir. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, Miss James, Mickey Garber, Unincorporated, Rex, Georgia. <clears throat> I would like to thank the county employees who participated in the February 23rd work session. I believe attendance at, the work, at these work sessions are just as important as the regular BOC meetings. Particularly, I'd like to thank Warden Dennis Nelson's participation was particularly important because because it shows that something is being done to address our litter and garbage dumping in our county. However, he cannot solve the problem alone. It is going to take the involvement of every man, woman, child, business owner, vendor who visits the county. And yes, even the garbage collectors who pick up your household garbage. Along with pointing out the positives, also let me point out the negative. Our litter problem did not happen overnight, and it will not be solved overnight. And the delay of our cleanliness falls squarely on Commissioner Warner, Commissioner Hambrick, and yes, my commissioner in District 1, Commissioner Gregory, citing a cost of $150,000 to support the Clayton Clean and Beautiful program by a vote three to two. I am appalled that the essence of man, which is motherhood, would defeat cleanliness at any cost. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Timothy Vondale Jefferson.
Timothy Bondell Jefferson, Unincorporated Clayton County. I am uh, quite disturbed that a commissioner took out a stalking TPO charge out of me. And uh, it's caused me a lot of pain and suffering. Unfortunately, hereditarily, I have a, I suffer from heart failure. When I was in my attorney's office and the deputy was reading the charges, I uh, got chest pains for four days. I had to take my nitroglycerin, wind it up in the hospital because of the stress that these fraudulent charges brought to my life. So when Orton is 2021, 20, 5th and 1, is taken off the agenda by the code of conduct of a commissioner, it is critically important. I have never heard of a commissioner taking out a stalking TPO charge out on a former candidate that ran against her. This is appalling. I, uh, it has cost me financially. It has caused me undue stress for my immediate family. Uh, it's very disturbing. So as we review the code of conduct, I think it needs to be implemented. And during this process, after a month and a half investigation, I want to thank the Clayton County Police Department for clearing me of these stalking charges. I want to thank them for their professionalism as they investigated this case. And I find it quite disturbing that a commissioner would attack the citizen in this fashion. And I hope that there's some remedy somewhere along the way <coughs> as I move forward on the potential lawsuit. Uh, that I'm praying over at this particular time. But uh, we talk a lot about black excellence. And we talk about moving the county forward in the spirit of excellence. And this county is under black leadership. We need to start bringing black excellence to the citizens that vote you guys in the office. And I thank you for your time. Y'all have a great day. Thank you, sir. Chris Gallagher. How you doing, Chairman? Good evening, Commissioners. I came to you tonight, uh, I moved years ago to Clayton County, about 1992 there. I live over at River's Edge there. There were only a handful of homes in Pinehurst, no other subdivisions. It had a beautiful golf course there. Since I lived there, the golf course has been sold about three times there. We mostly have an elderly population there. So last summer I said, I'm not putting any more money into it. If you guys want golf all you want for $20 a month and play, but there weren't enough people because they were elderly there. The golf course closed down for years with uh, Mr. Rolay there, Chairman Bell. I begged them to do something about the golf course there. No interest there. Shana Rooks came in, took an interest in our community there. They finally purchased the land there. They said that we're going to work on the Forest Park section of the trail. You're part of the trail over at Lake Spivey there. If we run into a problem, we'll jump from the one section to the other. You know, there, uh, I heard some person who came <coughs> and wanted to build homes on the fairways there, but luckily, because of our rules and regulations, they weren't allowed to there. But uh, they basically did a small section of the trail. They didn't do a top notch. They left up silk screening there where they grind up the old pathways there. They left big chunks of the rocks right next to the trail and everything, but it still looks better than it did. But they just did that to shut us up and they forgot about us. You know, Lake Spiv Spivey got done there, but now I hear that they're talking about, you know, bringing in a golf course there. If they do and the county sells the property, they won't have to put all that money into fixing it up there. They won't have to spend the money maintaining it there. But, you know, us as homeowners, we want you to fulfill the pledge that you did. Like if a golf course does come there, yes, it would be beautiful. 
if it closed down, county's gone there. It's going to overgrown again, and it's going to look terrible. And we have some beautiful, expensive homes in there. And I mean, I live Clayton County there, but you know, I want to protect my property there. I work too hard for it. I plan on living and dying in Clayton County in my house there. And uh, I would like you to finish what you promised us with the walking trail that you were going to do in there. We could all enjoy there before it was the golf course. You know, you couldn't be on the property there with the golfers, with the carts and everything. You know, it's private property there. But I'd like you guys to stick to your promise, come in there and do something with that trail. Everybody keeps asking. They've been promised for years. They haven't been back. When are they going to complete the trail and hold up the promise to make it look nice there? You know, and everybody's saying, me now, well, Lake Spivey got done. But they just did that little section to shut us up. And they haven't been back, you know, in years here to do anything. So and a lot of homeowners are upset about it. We're a few homes short of 2,000 homes. There were a lot of voters. So, you know, I hope that you stay with the trail and that you do come in and fix it up there because it will be an asset to Clayton County. We also have a historical slave cemetery in there that I wish the county would do, you know, something with there. You know, that could be, you know, an asset also there. But, you know, I'm asking you to come in and finish what you started there and our trail there will make our home values go up. People can come into our neighborhood with all our lakes and everything and enjoy it. So I'm asking you, you know, please thank you, stick sir, your with time what you up. did. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Roberta, I'll do a One second, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, we're actually having a meeting um, this Saturday at 11 a.m. Um, dealing with the trail, and we're going to hear from the residents on uh, where we are now, where we want to go, where they want to go, because I do understand that this should have been done, uh, but this is one of the things that I'm constantly bringing before our um, operations side of the house to have it addressed. So as your commissioner, um, I will look forward to seeing you all this Saturday. Uh, Rochelle Dennis will be reaching out to um, those in the county to make sure that they are there as well so that we can hear from you as a community. But I do understand that this timeline has been stretched out uh, over an extended period of time and that this project actually started under Commissioner, then Commissioner Shane Brooks, so I'm clear. Thank you so much, Mr. Gallagher. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Roberta Abdul Salam. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, honorable board members, I'd like to bring your attention this evening to a MARTA issue. And I'm not speaking in, on my role as the MARTA board member representing Clayton County. Rather, I speak tonight as the founder and president of the Friends of Clayton Transit, as the president of Citizens for Progressive Transit, and also I now represent the board as vice chair of the board of directors. I wanted to follow up on something that I saw in the meeting from February 16th. It was item 12-12A um, about structuring or restructuring the Citizens Advisory Board uh, that supports MARTA and its efforts here in the community. And there have been many questions that have been posed to me. Uh, rather than try to give answers that I don't have, I want to bring them to you. Question was, why was there a need for the change? And whose idea was it to make those changes? Uh, question is, um, why have the current CAG members been left out of the process? We didn't receive notice of any meetings, any sessions, any questions, nothing. We found out about it by a text message from a MARTA staff member the day after the board took action. We felt it was disrespectful as well. I know how my Commissioner Hambrick feels uh, when you talk about disrespect. We also have some concerns about the appointment process. There are entities that will have appointment powers that did not support us bringing MARTA to this county. As a matter of fact, they worked against us. And I say us because if it were not for us, we wouldn't have it. The commission didn't bring MARTA to Clayton County, the citizens did. I think that it's only right for the citizens to stay involved. It was the citizens that stood at these me meetings and proclaimed and insisted that citizens continue to be involved in the process of MARTA going forward. This is where CAG came from. This is where it started. 
And we think that the stakeholders ought to have a seat at that table. That should not be changed. And if it is changed, it will be a sad, sad day for Clayton County. We also want to know when the proposed changes will go into effect. There's nothing that said it in the, in the, or, in the resolution. Uh, and we also want to know what is the current status of our current CAG members, because none of us have heard anything. Those are the questions. We will follow up in writing. I'm not expecting answers tonight, but I do want to bring it to you and lay it on your heart, as heavy as it is on mine. Thank you very much. And just right quick, uh, as we spoke earlier, that I brought forth that. And yes, I'll be only too happy to answer those questions for you. Mm -hmm. But as we go to a point, new citizens or members to that board, nothing keeps us from important, uh, appointing <coughs> those <coughs> members that you just outlined that need, that in your opinion, uh, feel, you feel like they need to be on that board. So there's still that possibility of that happening. That's incumbent upon the uh, commissioners. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Madam Clerk, that concludes public comment. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Gregory. Yes, sir. I'd like to have a uh, personal moment of privilege, please, which I rarely do. Commissioner Gregory. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you know, first of all, I want to say um, it's, it's not enough emails to even matter. I think about three people have emailed me, you know, saying um, something about an appointment or some, well, who, who's not qualified or whatever. And I just wanted to remind people, you know, quite often people come up and they give their speeches and, you know, they're praising God or whoever, you know, they worship and so forth. And it, during my time of service, I've always tried to keep my faith out of it because I do represent people who do not believe in the God that I believe in and I respect them. And, but everybody, people come up with their, you know, who they worship and who they honor, but we want to judge and criticize other people. And I just want to leave these people with this in mind. If the grace of God, who you say you need, isn't for everybody, then it's not for anybody. So when we want to get ourselves in a little clip and talk about what we read in the paper, who's not qualified, why did you choose him? We're not the judges. And all of us have a past. All of us have made some choices that probably weren't the best. None of us are completely innocent. If we all have a fresh start, we all get that chance to make that fresh start every day. And I'd like to leave everybody with that. Stop being so judgmental. I don't go by what I read in the paper. Because um, I've read a lot of stuff in there that has not been true. Um, for some of the past six years, you know, I've been hounded by corruption, whatever, whatever. I don't have anything in the car, okay? Um, no extra money, no stealing money. You can ask Ms. Bitter. I didn't have any money from the county. So with that, I just want you all to keep that in mind as we move forward. And when you talk about uh, a code of conduct, the people elected us. If the people don't like how we're conducting ourselves, elect us out. It's just that simple. We don't have to have these jobs and so forth. We're doing it because of public service. So again, I rarely ask for that, but I just wanted people to keep that in mind as we move forward. Let's, let's not play God. All right, Madam Clerk, that concludes public comment. The board will now approve the consent items, items one through nine. All right, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make the motion, is there a second? Second. Any questions on any of the items? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The next item is item number 11, 20, resolution 2021-52. <clears throat> Good evening, um, Mr. Chairman, Vice Chair and Board. Uh, 2020 resolution 2021-52 which is a resolution to initiate an amendment to appendix a zoning to define certain terms relating to transitional housing and halfway houses to modify zoning requirements for these and related facilities to develop standards for these uses to provide an effective date of this resolution and for other purposes all right is there a motion i'll make the motion is there a second second I'll move in a second. Are there any questions? 
yes, this is Hamburg, and I have a question. Commissioner Hamburg. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is so broad, and, and I'm not clear on what it is inclusive of, because the concerns I get from my constituents and all of uh, regarding these kinds of housing, transitional halfway houses being in their neighborhood. So does this clear that up, or is that still the, the, the norm? How does this work? Well, how is this different with what we had on the books already? Mr. Ajiki, and this is an item we had on our work session. I think it was either the last work session or the session before. Well, well, we did. We talked about, I think, group homes and, um, uh, gosh, now I can't think of it again. She helped me out before the uh, other houses. Transitional uh, housing. Uh, we talked, uh, by the way, good evening, Chairman, Vice, and Commissioners. Uh, we talked about group homes, boarding home, and assisted living and those are coming on the 16th. We also presented the, tra um, the transitional homes as a result of getting requests about reentry programs, folks who are being re um, released or placed by state facilities. What we found in our code is a deficiency and a loophole that, that one of those requests could end up in our neighborhoods. So what we presented in the work session uh, was to kind of tell the board what we are working on, the research that we are doing. Nothing has been decided, Commissioner. This is just authorization for us to keep researching and bring it back to the board when we find something. We're trying to make sure that this type of housing don't get mixed up with our regular group homes and things like that. So that's what this is about. Nothing has been finalized yet. Oh, okay, well, I would, I would like to keep up with this because I, you know, need to be able to answer to the questions <laughs> I get, you know, from my constituents when they see, you know, five or six folk coming out of one house and all, and, uh, and, and is this legal? Uh, you know, can you do this in place that kind of thing? So just to keep us abreast, or keep me abreast of uh, what the, uh, uh, do's and don'ts are with this, and is this something we are permitting in the county? We are not currently permitting it. Um, just think about the clientele that this um, consists of. It's quite different from the group home and variety or the assistant living variety. So that's why we are paying closer attention to it. Okay, and, and something else too, and we, we did mention this before. Oh, okay. Uh, are we going to include anything regarding Airbnb? Because I, I get calls on that. We, we do have an um, ordinance that relates to that. But I did want to kind of echo uh, what uh, Mr. Jiki said about um, uh, with the reason why this is an initiation. Uh, what we want, the state law gives us the uh, opportunity if someone is applying for uh, certain types of housing like half, halfway houses, drug rehab, to have a public hearing um, well in advance of the time that it comes back before you. So it's usually, it's, it's, I believe it's six months if I recall correctly. They have to, before it even comes back to you, they have to have a public hearing to say, announce this is what is uh, contemplated. Um, the way that our code reads now, um, if we did not address this, somebody could slide in a halfway house or a drug rehab center without us knowing that that's what they were actually applying for and try to fit it in under one of our other existing definitions. So that's why we wanted to clean that up to make sure that um, the board is aware of when these uh, types of facilities come in and that way you can um, you know, make you can assess that for what it actually is and not falling under one of the other things that falls within <clears throat> our code currently, if that makes sense. It, it does, and, and thank you, Mr. GK. thank you, Chuck, uh, because this is the kind of thing I would like for us to be able to do. So thank you all for not forgetting, you know, the voices from the past regarding this matter. Have we thought to, I know the state is entertaining a house, or the house bill right now that is going to address the same thing but with, for pregnant women and I know that's supposed to be coming down the pike as well so have we begin to consider uh, that legislation as well 
um, what right now <coughs> this only deals with um, transitional houses, halfway houses, um, drug alcohol rehab centers. If the state law, we have to kind of see what actually passes, and then we'll determine whether that requires us to have to amend our code further. But right now we're just targeting this because that is this is an issue that somebody came to us uh, with that kind of raised it to our attention that we might need to address that. Any other questions? I have a question. Um, Commissioner Franklin. Talking? Commissioner Franklin, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I want to say thank you all for taking the steps in the direction that we need to go with this. But I think the, um, the, the biggest heavy lift for us is enforcement because most of the people that are having these type of homes in our community um, just as Commissioner Hamburg is stating, we get the calls on, they're not applying for a business license the first. So I'm glad that this is happening and it's helpful, but we have to figure out a way to enforce the laws and to be able to make sure that it's not happening, especially those that are not applying for, um, for those licenses and they're doing it illegally. People are renting out rooms and houses now. And it's really a tough situation because, as we know, the right to own property and the enjoyment of that property is a constitutional right. So this is probably one of those matters um, that we need to add really to the other item about discussing with uh, our lobbyists as well as uh, our legislatures because we're going to have to pull in the help from those on the north end of town, as, as uh, Commissioner Davis alluded to, especially with state laws changing we tend to probably get a little bit further if we join with our cohorts in other areas. So I just want to bring that to our attention. Well, one thing that this board has actually um, began the process was amending uh, the zoning ordinance to um, change the definition as it relates to bis uh, boarding homes, group homes, personal care homes. Uh, part of that process which will come to you all as your next regular uh, business meeting is requiring licenses for that so that kind of speaks to the the address of uh, the issue you raised commissioner uh, franklin it's because when someone makes a complaint once this ordinance passes if the board chooses to pass it we'll be able to cite them because they'll be running a business without having a license if they are in fact running one of those types of of uses that's awesome thank you Thank you all for your effort. Thank you, um, Ajiki and um, Chuck. Thank you. Any other questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> it's unanimous. Uh, the second is uh, Resolution 2021-53, which is a resolution by the Clayton County Board of Commissioners identifying certain state legislative matters to be addressed during the 2021 legislative session of the Georgia General Assembly. To authorize the chairman to perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution, to provide an effective date of this resolution, and for other purposes. All right, is there a motion? Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Probably move and second. Any questions? Not a question, but a comment. I know in September we gave the delegation our legislative priorities uh, and this is I believe next week is crossover correct Monday, Monday I believe Monday and some of the other things that we're asking for here we gave direction to the Solicitor General to take up or make the request to the uh, delegation chair which he did uh, so I really don't see a need to have this on but again that's just a statement coming from my perspective are there any other questions? All right, those in favor, aye. Wait, one second, I apologize. Um, I think we just need to make sure there's room for it to where it gives enough space to where we can make sure that we are um, achieving the goal of the board to make sure that um, it's not more than 90%. And, um, you know, Mr. I heard Mr. Chairman state that what was stated, I mean, honestly, I thought that was the executive session conversation, but um, this was just to solidify the direction of the board. It's one thing to be able to go to our legislatures, legislators and ask them for something, but it's another thing when they know that the board is unified on that particular direction. And then we understand too that it's, um, going, it's getting towards uh, the end of this session. 
But as you and I both know, you don't want to introduce something that one year. You want to give people an opportunity to take a look at it and understand the direction that our board is thinking and where we're going. And I think it's ever so important for us to not only communicate, but also to bring structure to the way that we make decisions here in the county. So I just want to make sure, Mr. Reed, that again, there's space in there to where we can get the proper calculations, get the proper wording to where not at any given time a supplement will be added to the salary to bring that individual in that position more, make it more than the current DA. And we can certainly amend what's there to say that it would be 90% of the district attorney's base salary to make it very clear. That would be great. And then to have the 1.5% increase for each term reelected. So I think those two things might make it plain if that's what the board would want to consider. That was my understanding. That's what we were thinking about. But I think we need to understand we're a populated county and we got our folks in this area that are making significantly less than others with a less population. We need to definitely let folks know that we're behind them. And that's the only purpose of this. And not to add to it, but next year we've got to add those other two items just as we talked about with the housing. But that's all I have for this. Okay. And please make no mistake, I support our people 110%. But at the same time, and going back to your earlier statement, my conversation with Brooks, Solicitor Brooks happened prior to even our meeting last week or two weeks ago. So I hear what you're saying. And with us just having given our constitutional officers a nice size raise, and I do understand that he is lagging behind as it comes to Solicitor General's pay in the Metro Atlanta area. But with being in the middle of also planning out the budget, we've just got to be cognizant of the money that we are spending. So that was just my only point. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's exactly why we're saving that $150,000 and 166. But it also has to be sustainable. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 4-1. It passes. That's all you have. Mr. Chairman, the next item is 13, 14, 15, and 16 are board appointments. All right. First board appointment is to the Dev Development Authority Board, Commissioner Davis uh, selection. Uh, Mr. Jean-Claude Bourget, term will expire March 1st, 2021. New term will begin March 1st, 2021. And will expire March 1st, 2025. Mr. Davis, you have a recommendation. I do. Uh, seeing a, a, a very harsh need to have somebody that represents school system on this board. Um, I put forth Mark Christmas. All right, I'll second that motion. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? All right, it's unanimous. Next board appointment is to Development Authority. This is uh, my selection. Ms. Deborah Green, appoint, appointed, uh, appointment expires on March 1st, 2021. At the February 16th, 2021 board meeting, Mr. Connor uh, J. was appointed to replace her. However, he is ineligible. The new appointment will start immediately and will expire March 1st, 2025. And I am recommending Mr. Fong Duong. Is there a second? Second. What's that name, Mr. Chair? Fong Duong. D U O N G. Okay. Properly moved and second. Are the Make a second. Commissioner Davis. Those in favor, aye. 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 Uh, Mr. Oh. Chair, we didn't ask for the question, sir. I'm sorry. Is there a question? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, any questions before the vote? Yes, I do have a question. I had spoken some couple of years ago about the process in which we um, put both people on board. And I think that um, based upon us having to take this vote again, is an opportunity for me to state that when we're voting, we're voting on someone that we don't know anything about. We don't even know if they're eligible. So for instance, as Commissioner Gregory um, stated earlier, we do get a lot of calls about what we do in our appointments. And I, for one, I have no problem with saying why I make a vote or why I appoint somebody. 
However, I do have an issue or a concern when I'm voting, me voting for someone, when I have no means of knowing if they're eligible. So I really would like this board to seriously consider if we can look at a process at least so something's submitted that we know that person's met all qualifications. Otherwise, even like on this vote, I'm going to have to simply either abstain or vote nay because I don't know this person, I don't know where they live, and I consciously am not able to vote without having that criteria provided or the documentation provided. Since these are respective appointments, I'm going to trust that person who makes that appointment because we all have this election, and I'm going to trust that that commissioner has vetted that person and so forth. I may not know him, but you may know him as an outstanding business person who has all kind of bonding experience and so forth, and I'm going to go by that judgment in situations like this. Yes, and people do move, and that was what happened in my last election. So he had moved, and I wasn't aware of it at the time. So easily corrected. But, yes, I would expect each commissioner to do their due diligence to make sure that they're appointing somebody who has the knowledge and the experience as well as meet the requirements of whatever board we're putting them on. And just a side point, yes, I did request the resume for the person that I just put forth. And Ms. Brenda has worked real hard. I've got to give it to her because when we changed these policies, she did go back and work and, you know, and get all of our board appointments, you know, together like this. And I think it's great that they have five or more members. You know, each one gets to put someone up there. And I guess that's part of our duty as board members, you know, to make sure that we, you know, vet them out and so forth and they're capable and ready to serve. All right. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 4-1. Is that you, Commissioner Hambrick, or was that Commissioner Franklin? No, that was Franklin. Just nay on that. I know the other gentlemen and know that they live there. My only concern is knowing when I vote that they have something, you know, they reside in the county. I do agree with Commissioner Gregory, though. But I'm a nay. Thank you. All right. Next board appointments to the Animal Control Board. This is Commissioner Gregory's selection. Ms. Barbara McKenzie term will expire on March 12, 2021. New term will begin March 12, 2021 and will expire March 12, 2024. Commissioner Gregory. Okay. And again, this is one Ms. Brenda and I have talked about. And Ms. Taylor is excited about serving. And so I would like to offer a motion to continue her service on this Animal Control Board. That's Barbara McKenzie. I'm sorry, Ms. McKenzie, that you, we talked about. I apologize. Yeah, you did tell so me you're, that you were going to So you, I'm sorry, Commissioner. Second. So you're just so that we're clear, you're you're re, you're reappointing Ms. McKenzie. Barbara McKenzie. Ms. McKenzie, okay. yes. All right. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Hambrick. Any questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. All right, next board appointments to the Animal Control Board is Commissioner Davis's selection. Ms. Becky Sheffield, term will expire March 12, 2021. New term will begin March 12, 2021. Expire March 12, 2024. Commissioner Davis. I move we reappoint Ms. Becky Sheffield. I'll the second end. the motion. Any questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Is unanimous. Well, do we need executive session? Yes, sir. Just on uh, litigation and real estate. All right, I'll make a motion to go into executive session for real estate and legis uh, real estate litigation. and litigation. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed. It's unanimous. Everybody have a great evening. All right, let's hold roll call. Uh, Commissioner Sonna Gregory. Aye, here, sir. Commissioner Gail Hambert. Present. Commissioner Felicia Franklin. Present. Commissioner DeMont Davis. Present. Everyone's present. Uh, Mr. Reed? No, I got to take a motion to reconvene. Mm -hmm. So a motion to reconvene. So move. I'll second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Mr. Reed. 
Um, I have a settlement agreement in the matter of uh, Denisha Marshall related to an accident, well, related to um, Jamiria Marshall's accident on or around February 6, 2020 at or near 8482 Thomas Road in Jonesboro, Clayton County, Georgia, in the amount of uh, $32,000 and authorized the Chief Financial Officer to amend the budget to reflect the appropriate revenue, revenue source and expense. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Is there a second? All right. Well, the motion fails due to the lack of a second. No, I second. You, well, you're on mute. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Well, Commissioner Hambrick second the motion. Any questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Motion to adjourn. I'll make so the motions second, that second. Second. Second by Commissioner Davis. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. <laughs>